Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this Netflix style intro which will work with any text in Blender 2.8 and rendering it using the EV render engine. If you want to make sure all your settings are the same as mine just go to file, load factory settings and then click OK. So to start off with I'm going to make the text object so I'll delete the default cube and then shift A and create a text and I'm just going to say Netflix but you can do this with any text you like. And now to make this the same text as Netflix, I'm going to go over here into the text tab, then into font, and then select the font which I've downloaded. And I've included a link to this font in the description, so it's called Bebas New. And then just click Open Font, and now it's all correctly installed. Now, there are some issues with this font when you're converting it to a mesh, which is what I've got to do next. So to add this curve, which you see at the bottom on the actual logo, I've got to convert it to a mesh and when you do this so up here in object convert to mesh there are some issues which are hard to see but you can only really find out from trial and error so for example in this T these two vertices here you have to bring down a bit because otherwise they're overlapping at the top so I'm just going to press G Y and then bring them down a little bit so they aren't overlapping anymore that's the only issue I've found so far but if you are using this font you know beware that it's not optimized for blender so you can use any font you like, it's just that this makes it look a bit more accurate to the actual logo. Now I'm going to use a solidify modifier over in the modifiers tab here. Set it a thickness of 1 and then an offset of 1 so that it's coming up instead of down. And this is what I'm going to use to animate how much it comes out of the surface of the floor. So I'm going to animate the thickness by pressing I while hovering over this thickness box. Then I'm going to skip to frame 30 by pressing the right mouse button over 30 on the timeline, changing the thickness to 2 and then pressing I again and then frame 60 back to instead of 1 I'm going to do 1.1 so that it's still slightly above the ground plane when it's at the end so that you can still see the red text and then press I again. And now if we press space we can watch this animation it'll come up and then back down. And I actually want to put a keyframe just here at 50 where it's still at 2. So what this means is that instead of it going up and straight down, it's going to go up, wait a bit at 2, and then come down. And now to see how this works with the ground plane, so for the reason we've used 1.1 meters at the end instead of 1, I'm going to make 1 press G, Z, and then 1.05, so that at the start, the text is below it, and at the end, it's above it. So now I'm going to set up the lighting. So I'm going to go 7 to go into top view, click on the... Uh, timeline somewhere so that the text comes up and then control alt 0 which will snap the camera to current location and to bring up the side panel and lock camera to view under view and now if you go into render view you can see that the text is popping up just how we want it to and then if we select this light I'm going to move it over here and I'm going to change its type under here from point to spot and then R to rotate and I'm going to rotate it so that it's about like that and I'm going to make this light ever so slightly yellow by just changing its color there so it's only slightly yellow and then I'm going to set the world lighting to a value of 0 0.2 on the strength and then make it blue so that we've got this nice split toning between blue shadows in the fill light and yellow key light. So this is looking quite nice at the moment but we do need to make a material for this actual logo so I'm going to go into the materials tab here and make a new one I'm just going to name it white text and bring the roughness up just a little bit and I'm actually going to increase the radius of this light over here to a value of about one meter but you can see not much is changing because we haven't set up EV to do the lighting properly so I'm going to select ambient occlusion bloom screen space reflections and then check refraction and uncheck half rose trace and then under shadows check high bit depth and soft shadows and there you go that's softened them right up so they're actually a little bit too soft so I'm going to bring the radius back down to about 0.5 meters and you can just adjust any of these values just to your own personal liking none of this has to be exactly how I've done it so now what we've got to do is split each of the letters individually so that they rise up one by one rather than all coming up at once so I'm going to go back into solid view press 1 to go into the side view and then I'm going to go into animation, I'll just go back into the side view here, the animation tab at the top up there, 
If you click on any one of these, you'll see that it's still all one object, so we've got to split them up into individual letters. So to do that, I'm going to go tab into edit mode, A to select everything, and then P by loose parts, and they're all individual objects now. Tab back out of edit mode, and then object set origin, origin to geometry, so they each have their own correct individual origins. And then I also need to go to object relations, make single user object animation, and then selected objects so they all have individual keyframes rather than all referencing each other because otherwise if you change the keyframes for one it'll automatically change it for all the rest because they still have relations set up so we had to remove that so now what I'm going to do is to delay them all I'm going to change where this keyframe is which sets where it hits the, the sort of peak of its height so to do that I'm going to select this second object here select those keyframes with left click and then G2 to move them two frames to the right, so that's two frames later. And then this one, I'm going to do G4, and then G6, G8, G10, and G12. So that you see they're all sort of stepped now, and when we play the whole animation, they're coming up one by one, and then all hitting the peak and going down together, so that's exactly what it looks like in the real animation. So now we can set up the camera panning backwards when the animation has finished. So we need to see when they go down. So it starts panning back about here. So I'm going to select the camera and press I and make a location keyframe here. And then I'm going to go to frame 130 by right clicking on the timeline. G and Z to bring it back to about there. And then I and location again. But you'll see if you play this back, it sort of slowly speeds up and then it slows down again, which isn't what we want. So what I'm going to do is, in this top left window, go to the graph editor. And if you pan around just using middle mouse button, you can see these keyframes here. And how it's going to speed up slowly and then slow down slowly. But we want it to speed up quite quickly. So I'm going to select this handle just with left mouse click. And then bring it so that it's going to speed up really quickly and then slow down as it slows. So as it gets higher. So now when we view by pressing space you can see that it's going to come up and then it's going to jump back and then slow down. And actually I want to move these keyframes a little bit to the left just so that it starts just before they actually finish rising and falling. There we go. So that's about what we want. And now we need to animate the material of these. So because we made the material when they were all one object they all have the same material which is exactly what we want. We don't want to have to edit it individually. So I'm going to go to the shading tab up here and that will bring up these material nodes at the bottom. And I'm going to come down here and just drag up so that we've got a little timeline as well. So it's between these two frames of it being up. So this one's where it needs to be all white so I'm going to hover over the base colour and press I so that that's set a keyframe for it being white at this frame. Right arrow to go just one frame forwards and I'm going to change that color to be red and then set a keyframe there. And now it will jump between those two frames, between being white and being red. So that's really everything in the modeling and texturing side, but I'm going to do a bit of compositing just to add a sort of vignette around the outside like the real animation has. So to do that, I'm going to come over here to compositing tab. I'm going to select a frame about there where it's sort of in the middle of the animation and click render, render image just so that we've got an image to work with. And now if we click use nodes up here and then shift click on render layers, you can see it there. And now if you click shift A, output viewer and move that to here and click fit, we can see everything that we're doing in the compositor. So I'm going to make a matte ellipse mask I'm going to have that going into a filter blur and then I'm going to have the blur filter going in a color mix with the original image with the mix type set to multiply and if you view this at the moment it's not going to look like what we want it's going to look there we go it's not blurred at all because these are set to 0 and it's very small because these are set to 0.2 and 0.1 so I'm going to drag the width up until it's about where I want, which is there, about there, almost at the edge. And then drag the height up so it's about here. 
and then I'm going to set these values in the blur to be 500 and that's going to blur it. Here we go, so we've got a nice vignette around the edges. And I'm actually also going to add a colour RGB curves, bring that value down and this one up, so that it's just adding a bit of contrast to our scene as well. And now you can render out your animation, so I'm going to render it out by going into the output tab and changing it to, first of all, 30 FPS, and then changing this to FFmpeg video, changing the encoding to MPEG4, and then choosing where I want to output it to, so I'm going to do it to my desktop. And then you just need to go to render and render animation, it'll render it all out, and then you've got your final product. So if this video has helped you at all, if you've enjoyed watching it, please consider sharing it, giving it a like or subscribing if you want to see more. Thanks for watching.